Oh. Sycamore Township uh, Board of Zoning Appeal is called to order. Uh, roll call of the board. Mr. Schwartz. Present. Ms. Ms. Hughes. Present. Mr. Tenney. Present. Mr. Luger. Present. Mr. Schultz. Here. Present. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <coughs> Next is approval of the minutes. Um, we have a motion on that. I will motion. We approve the minutes. I'll second that. And call the roll. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Um, Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Tenney? Yes. Mr. Luger? Yes. Mr. Schultz? Yes. Okay. Swearing in. Anyone who is going to give testimony has to be sworn in. So if you're gonna if you're gonna come up and speak. Please stand and raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Okay. I, new business. Case SYCB230003. I am going to abstain, and I'm going to leave the room. Okay? Okay. Okay. And where is it? Here it is. Sorry, I should have been on my. This is a uh, mobile, correct? Yes. 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 <clears throat> Case SYCB 23003 is a condition, excuse me, conditional use um, petition uh, submitted by the Elevar Design Group for Muller High School. The applicant is requesting to build a three-story addition of 15,970 square feet and uh, having it at 37 feet, four inches in height. Um, the zoning is single family residential, uh, condi conditional use. Um, could you let us know what it is we need to? Yes, thanks, thanks Mr. Chair. Um, so um, yes, a condi conditional use case. Um, Notice was sent out to all of the conti contiguous uh, molar parcels, um, which is 16.7 acres worth. Um, the applicant on behalf of Molar, Archbishop Molar High School requests a conditional use approval to build a 15,970 square foot uh, three-story addition in the rear of the property. According to the applicant, the addition will provide uh, for new student commons, open atrium space, and specialized, specialized design labs, um, focus on tech and art career pathways. Um, the location of the addition is in an uh, it's in an existing landscape courtyard space. Um, existing um, portions of the school um, screen this space, so you can't see it from Montgomery Road. Um, but to the northwest, there are residential houses that may have a partial sight line to the addition. Um, the closest um, is approximately 237 um, feet away from the proposed addition. The closest residential property. Um, an existing ban of natural deciduous vegetation screens subject property. Um, the remainder of the courtyard will be re-landscaped re with the statue of, of Blessed Mary being the centerpiece. Um, related to parking, a temporary loss of 31 um, parking spaces will occur during the pe this period of construction. Additional parking is not required um, because for high schools in Sycamore Township, parking counts are set by student enrollment or employee count. Um, uh, not the addition of the building uh, square footage. Um, and speaking with uh, Marshall Heisdu, the president of Moeller, uh, no additional enrollment will be added, so no parking spaces are necessary. Um, just a little bit of uh, recent site history for um, 9001 Montgomery Road or Moeller. Of course, it was founded in 1960. Um, back in 2021, a new parking field was added located the north, uh, northwest of the school. Um, in 2019, 2020, and 2021, uh, Moeller um, uh, finished some interior alterations throughout the school building. 
So for a conditional use, um, there are four general considerations that you consider. Then there are um, five specific considerations as uh, required by the uh, zoning code. The first condition is 17-6A, um, spirit and intent. The proposed use and development shall comply with the spirit and intent and intention of the zoning resolution and with district purposes. The, uh, the proposed use and development will be in harmony with the general and specific purposes for which this resolution was enacted and for which the district's uh, regulations in question were established and complies with all additional standards imposed on it by particular provisions of this resolution authorize such use. The finding, um, this propo proposal conforms to the underlying zoning district uh, regulations and is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution of note. Um, in terms of their height, the height is allowed the, the max height for an institutional building in a residential district is 60 feet. Um, they meet all the setbacks required for that. Um, and then two, just to note again, as no new student enrollment or staff is being added associated with increasing building square footage, additional parking spaces are not required. 176B, no adverse effect. The proposed use and development shall not have an adverse effect upon adjacent property or the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of Sycamore Township. The finding for this the proposed addition is an infill addition and in that it is proposed for a courtyard of the existing school properties that uh, may have a view of the addition or residential properties to the Northwest, um, 237 or more feet away. Protection of public interest, 17-6C, uh, the proposed use and development should respect to the greatest extent practical the natural, scenic, and historic features of significant public interest. Uh, the proposed project's use and development will not disrespect the natural, scenic, and historic features of significant public interest. That's the finding. 17, 17.6D, consistent with adopted plans, um, the proposed use and development shall, um, as applicable, be consistent with objective policies and plans related to uh, land use adopted by the Board of uh, Township Trustees. Uh, the finding. As you can see to the right, the presence of the of molar is consistent with the present future land use objectives and the future land use plan. Now for the specific considerations, um, 17.7 from the code. So 17.7.12, measures shall be taken to minimize the impact of potential nuisances such as uh, noise, odor, vibration, and, uh, and dust on adjacent properties. The finding, the proposed addition will not create long-term potential nuisances such as noise, odor, vibration and dust on adjoining properties. Um, and, and working with Elevar, uh, Mr. Uh, Eagle, the, um, he noted that the measures will be taken during construction to minimize noise and dust from construction traffic. 17-715A, boundary buffer A. Um, the code requires a, a basically a boundary buffer that's uh, shown in the report. Uh, the subject property is screened by an existing <laughs> band of natural deciduous uh, vegetation, a strip of honeysuckle. Um, given the active nature of the rear area of Moore High School and the sight lines of neighboring residential properties related to the addition, if the board finds that additional um, vegetative buffering is necessary, to the, uh, is necessary to bring the boundary buffer into compliance uh, with the standard, the township supports the representation made by the applicant in the application, which was uh, Moore High School is willing to work with adjacent property owners if new landscape it is needed. So we kind of leave that open to the board. 17715C, streetscape buffer. An existing streetscape buffer is located on the property front along Montgomery Road. Um, so it, it's really moot in this case. Um, the addition um, is being concealed from Montgomery Road by the existing high school structure. 17716C, only one sign is permitted at 32 square feet finding. Um, this is not applicable as new signs are not proposed. 17-719. All exterior lighting shall be directed away from the adjacent residential properties. Uh, the finding, um, Superintendent Township Zoning Resolution 12-7.2 requires all outdoor lighting to be designed and located with the maximum illumination of uh, 0.5 foot candles at the property line. According to the applicant, all exterior wall-mounted lighting will be directed downward and away from adjacent residential properties. Uh, staff did not have any concern about that. Um, with that, for a staff comment and recommendation, staff recommends approval of the conditional use request if 
Um, the board moves to approve the conditional re uh, use request. The board could consider the following proposed conditions. Number one, if, that, if, if the board finds that improved vegetative buffering is necessary to bring the boundary buffer into compliance with the standard as noted um, in the report, staff shall review and approve the proposed proposal consistent with boundary buffer A standards prior to the approval of the zoning compliance plan. Um, and then uh, condition two, if necessary, outdoor lighting shall be installed to allow for safe nighttime activity outside of the addition and in the courtyard, staff shall review the outdoor lighting uh, plan prior to approval of the zoning compliance plan, basically just showing that on the plan um, at zoning compliance plan review phase. Uh, with that, are there any questions? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Anybody here have questions on what he read or saw or you've seen or what have you? Just the um, kind of just go through um, some of the uh, renderings. You've read the report. Here's the addition back here. Montgomery Road is to your south on the, or the bottom side of the screen. Um, so the addition's one in the courtyard. And then the parking that will be used for the uh, construction will be in the dotted. As for the boundary buffer A, um, here's just kind of the view from standing where the addition will be looking to the northwest. And there's just a sight line of residential. Um, you can see kind of the uh, the buffering that's in place now. Um, along the along that elevation, there's kind of the current condition of the buffering. Just a few pictures of it. So in the winter time, it's just visible. Uh, with that, that is all I have. I'm assuming that since the sight lines are fairly open now anyway, that none of the neighbors have called to say that they don't want this to happen. I don't know if that's the right way to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, and, and we certainly left it open so that in the meeting, if 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 residents had a concern, they could raise it. Mm -hmm. And if not, then we know it wasn't a concern and the board can take that with what they meant. So you haven't heard anything? Uh, not related to that, no. So at this point, does anyone have something they'd like to say? With the architect representative, uh, I have a comment that's Marshall. <laughs> So, um, yes, do you want me to stand up? Or yes, please? stand up, your name, your address, your affiliation. So uh, my name is Marshall Highest, I'm the president of Muller High School. Um, we have, um, you know, since we've been in this, um, in here working on the parking lot, our relationship with our direct neighbors uh, has significantly improved. We've improved our communication. Actually, the, the two neighbors, the two houses that were in that picture, uh, spoke with both of them, actually walked um, the one most closely related to, to the property, walked her through what we were doing, asked her if she wanted more buffering or any additional thing. She said no. Um, and I said, Kathy, um, if you change your mind, we're happy to work with you. Um, it will also send a communication out to that other neighbor, um, and, and they had no concern with, with the project. So, uh, and that's the Navarros. So, Kathy Wilson and the Navarros. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Actually, I do want to clarify one item. Okay. <laughs> uh, Evan Eagle with Elevar Design. As far as regarding the outdoor lighting, uh, it's not shown on the plan per se, but we're only having, we only have uh, wall mounted egress lighting at, there's a, there's sort of a vestibule there. I don't know if you want to go back to the plan, Jeff. Okay. I just point to it. Control pocket where we're entering the addition. There's a little bit of wall mounted lighting there, and there's an egress door on the west side. So, as far as impact on property line, there's no new lighting, but that should affect that. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. I guess at this point, we'll close the uh, any other suggestions from the floor and uh, talk to Does anybody have anything they'd like to say about it? Or would someone like to come up? It, um, it, it, Mr. Chair, have you made it up, uh, open the floor to the public to see if any? I thought I, thought I did that. Oh, oh, okay. I, 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 I ask if anybody would like to come up and speak. Okay, it was for the school and the public. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> so I, I take it over. Yeah, you, you did. did. You did. You did. I, I said that out loud. Yeah, I, um, I heard you. Um, I so we'll close it and we'll. Talk amongst ourselves about anything, any suggestions or um, 
any reservations you might have about it. And um, somebody, if you're if you're good, somebody make a motion. No reservations to it all. Uh, no questions either. So it seems so self contained. Yeah. So okay, I'll make a motion. I I propose that we accept the uh, plans and uh, the documents and the and the uh, project as proposed. Secretary. Yeah. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Um, Ms. Hughes? Yes. Can I? Yes. Is it here, Mr. Schultz? Yes. Done. Yes. Very good. Your conditional use has been approved. Yes. That's I'll go grab ten. She's coming in. Oh, there he comes. Thank you. We're all still alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Ted, did you want to take that seat? Break or are you, are you good? You're not, good. Not with this speed. Go Very on. good. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten your challenge. Let's see if you're up to it. Okay. <laughs> ready for the next case? One second. I'm ready. Okay. Next case, SYCB 230004. You ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Um, it's a conditional use ca uh, case uh, relates to CHCA. Brian um, Fetzer is, uh, was the applicant. He's with CHCA. Um, CHCA High School is subject property 11525 Snyder Road. Um, the proposed use is a new CHCA baseball complex. Um, the zoning is A2 single family residential. The site area or, um, is 18.038 um, um, acres. Um, background, CHCA seeks a, a conditional use approval um, as it seeks to revamp, um, a, a major revamp of its existing baseball complex, which was constructed with the original school under the underlying zoning of 1989. Um, interestingly, the original school and original base com baseball complex received no conditional use, which is kind of a I kind of, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, but it was under the straight zoning at the time. Uh, the new synthetic baseball field would be oriented towards Snyder Road, uh, parallel to I-71. Um, the field will be complete with new netting, a new outfield wall, um, 37 feet tall in left field, tapering down to eight, field, eight feet in right field, um, and approximately 28 foot tall uh, new grandstand behind home plate, new seating areas with the total estimated seating of 500 seats dugouts, bullpens, batting cages, a new maintenance building near I-71, uh, protective netting in the outfield. Um, the purpose of the netting is safety um, and a newly paved interior access drive for emergency service and bus access running along left field, um, which will not be open to the public and will be gated. Uh, the left field wall will be of similar dimensions to Boston's Green Monster. Uh, state-of-the-art athletic field lights are proposed, which conform to Sycamore Township's photometric standards, but we'll need a variance for height. Um, a new 26 by 19 digital scoreboard is proposed in left center, um, left center field. On the existing landscape berm that runs parallel to Snyder Road, additional landscaping is proposed on the Snyder Road side of the berm. Um, the Sycamore Township Fire Department has reviewed the width and site arrangement of the emergency access drive. It's satisfactory for their uh, vehicles and turning radii. Uh, related to the validity of uh, the conditional use approval due to supply chain considerations, CHCA re will request a variance to allow a two-year validity period unless a building permit is issued. Currently, it's, it's a one-year validity period. Um, currently, um, related, we'll kind of get into it a little bit later, but related to the fencing, there's, there's some netting here and there's some netting um, along um, left field. Um, the current site arrangement of the field, um, well, the, 
current side of the arrangement of the field has the um, home plate kind of towards Snyder. So and, and, uh, talking with CHCA, some of the foul balls, um, if they're fouled, they'll go towards Snyder into the right of way. So the, the netting is a, some, uh, trying to improve the safety there. So CHCA can talk about that a little bit more. Um, related to, um, uh, like the Mueller case um, for conditional use, there's four general standards that are reviewed. Um, and then there's some uh, specific standards. With the general standards, there's gonna be a need for some variances because of the site arrangement of the site. Um, so we'll kind of go through those. Um, kind of a, a general comment. I don't think there was a real concern with the variances. You're basically, what you're kind of being asked tonight is basically to approve the general site arrangement of the field as you see it. So. Um, 17.6A spirit intent, the proposed use development shall comply with the spirit and intention of the zoning resolution and with um, district purposes, the proposed use and development will be in harmony with the general and specific purposes for which this resolution was enacted and for which the district's regulation, regulations in question um, were established and complies with all additional standards imposed on by the particular provisions of this resolution authorize uh, such use. Um, the baseball complex, it's a common accessory use for a school. Um, so we use the school standard for um, conditional uses. Um, the plan generally conforms to the underlying zoning district regulations. Um, it is it, it's in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution. But given the rather unique nature of the elements of the proposal, variances are necessary. Staff is supportive of the approval, as I mentioned. Um, the first um, variance relates to the height of the light standards. Um, eight athletic field light standards are proposed. Um, the code height 12-7.1 uh, allows a max of 32 feet tall. The proposed is 65 feet tall. Staff analysis. The proposed photometric plan meets the 0.5 or less standard at the applicable property lines. Uh, the standard light fixture are state-of-the-art uh, directed uh, light fixtures that were not invented at the formation uh, during the formation of the current 32 foot tall uh, regulation. It is likely that for highly focused LED fixtures to work correctly, the light standard height that is proposed is necessary. As I mentioned, additional landscaping has been proposed along existing Snyder Road landscape berm on the Snyder side to provide additional screening for baseball facilities. Staff finds that because the photometric standards are met at all property lines, um, which adjoin a residential use, this variance request is not substantial. The lighting technology is such that more height is necessary to the highly focused light fixtures. As, as such, staff finds that the neighborhood's character would not be negatively affected, nor would a neighboring property owner suffer a substantial detriment due to the installation of the athletic field lights. There is also a notable precedent, precedent for light standards on the subject property. In conditional use case 36-97, which approved uh, the CHCA football field uh, grandstand and football stadiums light standards, the CHCA football light standards were granted a condition that the light standards could be 80 feet tall or less. Um, A-2 uh, or, or uh, zoning district A-2 -A front yard setback. So the required front yard setback is 40 feet from all um, right of areas where there's a road and right of way. Um, the subject property is unique as it has a triple frontage lot at the junction of two county roads and one U.S. federal highway. Approval of the following um, setback variance with variances would constitute approval of the proposed site arrangement, essentially, of the baseball complex, which is essentially the purpose of this case. Uh, the following structures require a setback variance given their proximity to the right of way. There's the north, northernmost light standard closest to Snyder Road proposed at about 34.5 uh, feet from um, the right of way line or the property line. There's the middle light standard along Snyder Road. It's proposed setback from right of way is 36 feet. And then there's the southernmost light standard, which is proposed at 37 feet from Snyder Road right of way. Um, Batting cages at the north, northern end of the project, um, the, those are proposed to be set back 32.7 feet from Snyder and 13.5 um, um, feet away from the um, 71 right of way, kind of in that upper triangle area. And then there's a storage building near I-71 with a setback of 8.5 feet right here. Staff analysis, while the proposed improvements are sited closer to Snyder to the Snyder Road right-of-way line as compared to the existing baseball field, 
Staff does not have concerns related to any of the above noted setback variances. This baseball complex is replacing the same use, an existing baseball complex, which is well screened by an existing landscape berm uh, related to the light standards, the existing mounding um, and landscaping sufficiently screened the light standards. Uh, there's also, as we, as we mentioned, the in inclusion of additional landscaping. Uh, because the light standards meet the photometric standards, a minor setback variance for the light standards would, would not cause a substantial detriment to the neighborhood nor neighboring property owners. As for the batting cages at the northern end of the property, the proposed batting cages are proposed where batting cages have been in the past. Staff holds the, that approval of setback variances for the siting of the batting cages in proximity to the I-71 and Snyder Road right-of-ways in the storage building near um, I-71 right-of-way would not cause substantial, substantial detriment to the neighborhood nor neighboring property owners. Um, next, uh, 3.51, it's the height of institutional buildings and their relation to setbacks. So the maximum height allowed for institutional buildings, as we heard in the Mueller case, and it's the same in this case, it's 60 feet tall. Um, Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution 3-5.1 requires an additional foot of setback for each foot. The building is taller than the allowed height of that district for non-institutional non buildings, which is 35 feet. In the outfield, because the scoreboard and left field wall are, at, are 37 feet tall and because the required setback from the I-71 right of way is 40 feet. Um, therefore, the required setback from I-71 is 42 feet. Um, the proposed net certainly appears taller than 37 feet. So a setback variance would need to account for the height of the outfield net too. Um, the outfield wall is set back 17 feet from the rear property line, which is the I-71 right of way line. And the scoreboard is set back 30 feet from the, um, from the line. As such, the outfield wall and netting would require um, a 25 foot setback variance, probably the netting a little bit more. And the scoreboard would require a 12 foot variance. Uh, a variance could also apply for the right field netting closest to Snyder Road if that netting exceeds 35 feet tall. Um, staff analysis. Staff does not have concerns about the setback variances that are necessary for the scoreboard, left field wall, and left field netting. Um, as this area joins the I-71 right of way and perhaps Snyder Road uh, right of way, if the right field netting is over 35 feet tall, the presence in the height of these structures are not substantial, nor would they negatively affect the character of the um, community neighborhood. Um, 17.6B, um, the next standard, uh, no adverse effect, the proposed use, and the, now we're back to conditions and off variances. Um, the proposed use and debt development shall not have any adverse effect upon adjacent property or the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare. Uh, the finding uh, the proposed baseball improvements are located in the same footprint as the existing baseball complex. Baseball facilities are a common accessory of a school use. To date, staff is not aware of any concerns or complaints related to the existing baseball field amenities. Uh, where adjoining residential properties, the proposed photometric plan, as we noted, meets the 0.5 or less foot candle standard as required by Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution 12-7.2. 17.6. For 17-6C, protection of public interest, the proposed use and development should respect to the greatest extent practical, the natural scenic and historic features of significant public interest. Finding the proposed project use and development will not disrespect the natural scenic and historic features of significant public interest. Um, the last general standard 17-6D, consistent with adopted plans, the proposed use and development shall as applicable be consistent with objectives, policies, and plans related to land use adopted by the Sycamore Township Board of Trustees. Finding CHCA and its accessory uses are consistent with the current future land use objectives. As seen in the report, um, uh, it's listed as an institutional use. All right, now for the specific uh, considerations for conditional uses, this was the same standard that you just heard in the Mueller case uh, from 17-7. Um, 17-7, um, condition 12, measures shall be taken to minimize the impact of potential nuisances such as noise, odor, vibration, and dust on adjacent properties. Um, finding the proposed addition will not create potential long-term nuisances such as noise, odor, vibration, and dust on adjoining properties. Related to the sound system, staff recommends the same exact condition from case 3697, back from, back from that 1997 case, which approved the CHA football stadium. And that condition is... The proposed public announcement system shall include a compressor limiter 
which I think is like a volume switch, um, to control the volume when the proposed system is in use and that the volume of the proposed system not exceed the limits as set forth by applicable Sycamore Township resolutions. Um, related to the next condition, 17-7, um, 15A, boundary buffer A, um, uh, the finding, um, it is not applicable. Um, related to 17-7, 15C, streetscape buffer, um, an existing streetscape buffer is located on the property frontage along Snyder Road. Additional landscaping has been proposed to bolster the existing landscaping. The proposed buffer is generally compliant with the buffer standards. 17-7-16C, one sign permitted at the maximum of 32 square feet. Um, we will get into this a little bit more um, down in the conditions. Uh, CHCA has provided a little bit of um, uh, refined information that, that might take a little bit of a discussion later, but um, related to signs in the stadium, staff recommends the following conditions. The baseball complex shall be limited to one digital scoreboard measuring 26 feet wide by 19 feet tall, and the total height from grade shall be a maximum of 37 feet. The back of the scoreboard shall not have any signs on it and shall have a backing of solid color, such as a green or black or a color related to CHCA. A signage inside the stadium, such as on the outfield walls or the interior side of the grandstand shall be permitted and not regulated by the township. Uh, no signage shall be cited outside the stadium except what the Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution permits. And then 17-719, all exterior lighting shall be directed away from the adjacent residential properties. The finding, the standard is certainly met. CHCA proposes state-of-the-art directed lighting, which will be directed away from adjacent residential properties. Um, staff, comment, and site arrangement considerations. So as confirmed by the Township Wall Director, um, the variances can be granted by the BZA from a conditional use, but the conditional use request must be considered first. So you guys would vote on the conditional use request. If it passes, then you would vote on the variances. So as for the conditional use, staff, staff recommends approval of the uh, conditional use request with the inclusion of the following conditions. Um, a few of these, I think we'll have some discussion at the end naturally. So just note that for now, but number one, similar to the condition from case 36-97, Conditionally approved CHSA football field, the proposed public announcement system shall include a compressor limiter, which is a volume switch to control the volume when the proposed system is in use and the volume of the proposed system does not exceed the limits as set forth by applicable Sycamore Township resolutions. In addition to the baseball complex shall be limited to one digital scoreboard video board. The video board face measuring 26 feet wide by 19 <laughs> feet tall and total height from grade shall be a maximum of 37 feet. This is what's shown in the plan. Um, the back of the scoreboard shall not have any signs on it, shall have a maintained backing of solid color. Sign in, uh, next one, uh, condition three, signage inside of the baseball field area, such as on the outfield walls or on the field side of the grandstand shall be permitted and not regulated by the township. On the grandstand behind the home plate, signage shall only be permitted on the grandstand's field side. So that's just kind of a staff. The township really has no interest in regulating any signage that's in the building. But an analogy would be the Kenwood Town Center. We don't regulate any signage inside the, the wall. Condition four, uh, no signage shall be cited anywhere outside the stadium except what is permitted by Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution. Um, 32 square feet uh, is allowed currently outside the stadium is defined as any, any, any elevation not facing the playing field. Uh, condition five, a non-digital donor memorial located at the entrance of the stadium in a decorative paving area shall be permitted and not considered a sign. The memorial face uh, would not measure no, or any more than uh, 10 by 10, 10 feet by 10 feet with a max memorial height of 12 feet. The memorial could be two-sided. This was just put in as a kind of a catch-all so that you know, if CHA wants to honor its uh, donors, um, they can do so. Um, and this would be certainly be one that if CHA wanted something a little bit bigger, staff would have no issue with that. It's going to be kind of in that courtyard area behind home plate. Um, condition six, the lighting system shall utilize state-of-the-art highly focused LED light fixtures as shown. Uh, condition seven, the proposed landscaping shall be planted and located generally as shown on the submitted land landscape plan and maintained at all times. Condition eight, 
If the applicable variances are approved following the, the consideration of this conditional use review, the site plan shall generally conform to the plan shown in this case as determined by staff. Major site arrangement adjustments to the site plan shall require further Board of Zoning Appeals review. Um, it's, it's a hope that they do not have to come back. Um, condition nine, the conditions of this conditional use case are solely for the baseball complex. If the school seeks changes at the football complex, a separate conditional use case shall be required to amend the existing case 36-97. Condition 10, I think we're on uh, the location of the curb cut for emergency access drive on Snyder Road shall be approved by the Hamilton County Engineer's Office. The approval correspondence shall be provided to staff prior to the approval of the zoning compliance plan. If you had any questions on that, that drive is primarily used for like uh, buses, ambulances. It's, it's not meant for students. It's not meant for students, as I understand, talking to CHA, you know, for them to park for uh, batting cage practice, it's, it's, it's just for events. Um, the next one, the emergency access drive and bus parking should be an impervious um, surface as required by the Sycamore Township Zoning Resolution. 12, an access gate shall be installed, which would limit access to the private access road and shall be um, installed and utilized during non-event periods. Access method methodology, for example, a Knox box to the access gate shall be approved by the Sycamore Township Fire Department before the zoning compliance plan phase is approved. Um, the max height, the next one, the max height of the left field netting shall be no taller than X feet tall. And I think it would apply for the right field netting. This is just one area where um, the height of the netting will need to be flushed out by the board, potentially. And then the last uh, condition, the building material shown in this case shall be implemented unless as reviewed by staff, higher quality building materials are proposed. So um, basically what's shown, the um, uh, staff would look for those building materials to be implemented. But if a higher grade material is proposed, that would be fine. That's basically what that's saying. And then requiring a separate vote, the variances, if the conditional use request is approved, uh, staff recommends approval of the following variances. Um, the validity period for all the elements related to the above conditional use case, CHA shall be permitted a variance to allow for a two-year validity period unless a building permit is issued. Um, the height of light standards, if and only if the light lighting system utilizing state-of-the-art highly focused light fixtures as shown in this case is used, the max height of the eight proposed light standards shall be no more than 65 feet tall in height. And lastly, the setback of building structures from Snyder Road and I-71. Uh, the following buildings and estimated structures setback shall be approved consistent with the site arrangement of the site plan provided in this case, exact setback measurements shall be added uh, to the plan prior to the approval of the zoning compliance plan. Um, number one, Northwest, well, I won't go through them all here, but all, all of the setback uh, uh, considerations I mentioned, which would include the left field and right field fencing. With that, um, just wanted to show you a few uh, uh, pictures and then um, I'll ask if there's any questions. Um, I'll actually use McGill Smith Punchin's uh, uh, PowerPoint if they're okay with that. But this is basically the orientation of the baseball field. Uh, you have the batting cages up here. Um, along Snyder Road, you have the buffering, um, the access drive. Um, so that's really the orientation. Related to signage, um, the township zoning resolution is rather stringent in terms of institutional signage um and it's in the and frankly you know even with commercial signage in kenwood it's it's, it's somewhat restrictive in terms of the proposed grandstand signage whatever the proposed square footage of this eagle and the robert gardner stadium square footage is i think staff isn't there's not a concern there um it's not visible from right of way it's a natural place to put signage um related to signage that the um, township would perhaps have some concern would be the um, signage that is proposed on the outfield wall. Um, just related to 71. Um, um, it's just with what is proposed behind a home plate, the township views as it might be a little bit excessive. Um, also in this area of 71, there are some, there's some, you know, the right of way and then some vegetation. So you know, will you be able to see it? Certainly in the winter months, but in the summer months, it'll kind of kind of wane. Um, but that can be a discussion, you know, that's just one element. 
and that was kind of late breaking. That can be a discussion later on in the meeting with the uh, applicant. So um, with that, are there any questions? Does the board have any questions? Okay. Um, well, if it's cool. directed to them, we'll get that after we finish. We're just talking to staff right now. Then we'll get them up here and you can ask them. So yeah, some of the some of the questions may be something best left to the applicant. We can we can leave that for them. Yeah, I think mine are more related to the applicant. Okay. If you want to ask I, if, if it's something I can't address or no. Uh, um, but I, I do have a question about the light. So with the, because um, that's going to be a, a question to bring up. Yep. Applicant, but is the lighting, the post lighting, similar to what the existing lighting is on the floor? No, it's it's very much different. It's a new technology of lighting that's more highly focused, um, and it's it's much better. Um, the lighting on the football field is a, basically a generation older and it's not as well focused. Are the light stanchions on football field 16? They were approved at 80. Um, I looked at, I did look at the Google Street View and they're pushing, I mean, they're pretty tall. I don't know if they're 80, but. Typical stadium stand. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I said, that's, that's the question I have is the lighting, it's always, Interesting when we hear these studies, how they won't expand on the um, off the property, but then there's just that general low. I would yield to the applicant on this because they had lighting engineers provide this. But I mean, here is the uh, photometric plan. If I blow it up, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the property line, it's clearly. Point or you know less than 0.5, especially on the Snyder side. The standard is foot candles. So I, you know, the can you see the light standards? Yeah, across the street, you will be able to see the light standards. Might there be a glow? Maybe, but maybe that's from Snyder Road traffic or or whatnot. It's you know, real the standard is it's foot candles. Um, Thank you. Yeah, any more questions for staff? Okay, well, let's open it up. Is the applicant here? We are. Okay, you want to step forward and give us your name and business address? Hi, I'm Fred Bowling. I'm a landscape architect from MSP Design, uh, 3700 uh, Park 42, uh, Sharonville, Ohio, 45241. <laughs> Um, we are the designers for the project, working with the CHCA, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, at the point of reiterating a lot of information, I would like to run you through a presentation to give you a little bit more in-depth information about the project. Um, uh, this is, again, the site. And the part you see in green is the area that's affected by the baseball uh, complex. And the rest of it to the, the below that is the tennis courts and school and below it to the lower left is the football stadium. And I think we're looking at a little over four acres. acres. This is the current um, field that's out there right now. And one of the things that we really want to talk about is along Snyder Road because uh, you know that's where the, the public interface is with the project. Currently, there is a large landscape buffer with evergreen trees on top of it, so it really screens this area. We are not touching it. It's a it's um, per code like twenty feet landscape buffer. Our new fence is going to go essentially on top where the old fence was, and it's about a little bit over forty feet off of the pavement. So it's considerably back from the pavement. And as mentioned in the staff report, we will be augmenting the landscape that is there, the current landscape with additional landscaping to try and buffer things a little bit more and add some more interest to that area. Um, lighting, as you mentioned, is always uh, an issue or can be. And one of the things that we want to make sure we take into consideration is the fact that when you look at the foot candle thing, these are done by the lighting engineers assuming that you're on a flat earth with no impediments. 
So that's that's what the light foot candle would be out there if there was like a perfectly flat level area. However, with this roughly um, 10 foot high earth berm with roughly 20 or 30 foot tall evergreen trees on top of it, it really is going to block any light from getting to the uh, the uh, pavement where the property line. So it's kind of like a you know belt and suspenders kind of thing. We've, we've met the foot candles, which is what's code. But then on top of that, we've got all this additional buffering for you know light bleed. So we were thinking considerably about that as we develop this project. Additionally, one of the things that's going on with the current uh, baseball stadium is there's a lot of foul balls being hit over the landscape. There's actually a netting out there. It's about 25 feet tall, might be 30, it might be 20, but it's right in that range uh, to try and keep the baseballs on the property. But again, a lot of foul balls are going over the netting and over the landscape and going into the neighbor's property. That was one of the uh, uh, driving forces for flipping the field to the opposite orientation is that we could uh, take that farther away from the neighbors and, and have less impact on the, on the community from the, the sports field. Um, across the, uh, the top, um, we've got uh, I-71. There's, as mentioned, there's a current landscape buffer that's part of the uh, I-71 corridor. Um, currently, that flat area that's running against the I-71, there's actually a large uh, embankment inside the ball field um, because of the existing grade. And it's, it is problematic for playing sports because the guy's running backwards to try and catch a foul ball and then all of a sudden the grade comes up. It's, it's just not a good playing surface, which again is one of the reasons why this uh, project's being moved forward by the schools. They wanna give a synthetic field out there so they can use it uh, you know, in climate weather or, you know, more time of the year and get rid of this uh, uh, potentially dangerous uh, situation with the grade change in the Miller field. Um, down to the lower left is existing uh, locker room facility, which you'll see again on the uh, on the developed plan. It's staying the same. We're, we're not doing anything with that. And um, for the uh, for this part, I think that's everything I wanted to address. With the existing image up there, is there anything about the existing situation that you have a question about? Okay, we'll move on. Again, this is the image you saw of our proposed development. It's flipped the home field from the southeast corner to the southwest corner. Um, again, we're looking at kind of an odd shaped field. We're trying to make it work where the, the baseball field was. Um, one of the things that you're gonna notice is that the right field line down first base, it's about 275 feet right now. Well, the normal high school outfield is anywhere from 310 to 325 feet. So we're having you know, an enclosed eight foot high wall, padded wall for the uh, entire uh, field. But in those areas where it's closer, we're proposing to raise the wall a little bit higher so that it's a legitimate, you know, if you hit it over the wall, you're legitimately hitting a home run instead of hitting a, a 30 foot short uh, home run. So it would make it on par with uh, you know, your typical high school uh, baseball fields. When you get out the center field, it's about 400 feet. And then when you get up to the, the left field line, which is out by 71, uh, it's 265 feet. So again, this is why um, it was mentioned that the, uh, we were in, uh, proposing a tall wall out there like the big green monster for the Boston uh, Sox. Um, it would give the same effect. I mean, you'd have a wall that's high enough that when somebody hits a home run, they're legitimately hitting a home run and not hitting it off some short, um, some short field. It also adds quite a bit of interest to the, the, the uh, facility as far as having uh, more of a dynamic and a different approach to a baseball field. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but there's a uh, proposed new scoreboard out there about where the angle goes from the 45 to uh, due east, yeah, right in that area. Um, that's essentially where the current scoreboard is. This within, a, I don't know, 15 or 20 feet of that spot. So the proposed scoreboard going in essentially where the existing scoreboard is. That's much shorter. Existing score is shorter. It, I don't know what they call it. It's shorter, but I don't know what, what it current height current height is. So that's at the, the top part. While we're looking at the top part, we're, there's a uh, entrance road coming off of Snyder Road. This road uh, was designed as access primarily for two purposes. Number one is safety. Um, there's currently no emergency access to the north side of the football field. 
or the locker room area, or, you know, as it's the baseball field stands right now, there's no emergency access out there. This would serve the potential EMS uh, service folks. It would also be an opportunity for when the uh, visiting teams come, currently they have to offload in the parking lot down by the school and then get up to the uh, locker room facility or field house facility. This would be an opportunity for the buses to come in and drop them off right at the locker rooms and not have to cross through parking to get to their locker room facilities. There would be no public access for that uh, asphalt um, access way. It'd be gated. Um, it's just not, there's no desire or purpose for any parking for uh, games or any other reason up there. We do provide a larger spot of asphalt at the top, and that would be for the visiting buses to park during the competition, and then they can leave <coughs> from there. So that's what that asphalt is up at the top. Would, uh, would that parking area also service for football games so the way football buses would park? It would benefit parking at the school would open up a few spaces because you know parking's tight. Would, would that be used for football? It would be used for whatever sports are there. If they feel like even, uh, you know, the football obviously is, is very convenient for that. Baseball is very convenient for that. So yes, we would anticipate <coughs> it be more than just a baseball, but the, the long and the short of it is it would not be for anything other than uh, visiting team buses to park there and keep them, you know, out of the, out of the way, so to speak. Also the top, um, currently we're proposing um, some batting cage facilities. There are batting cage facilities already out there. They're down more situated towards the tennis courts, but we're trying to bring the field a little bit closer so that we get some room in there for the, the outfield to be a little bit bigger. So we move them up into a corner that's tucked in against the uh, overpass out there. So again, it's, it's visually screened by the overpass as well as existing vegetation. So. Uh, essentially, uh, you know, out of sight completely from the public in that location. Along the uh, I-71 area, again, where you, you see the asphalt coming down above the field house area, um, we've got a large turnaround there and there's a, a small a rectangle. That would be a maintenance and storage building for uh, supplies for the baseball field or the football field so that they could keep their equipment out there for, uh, you know, you're not obviously going to mow a synthetic field, but they do have a care that needs to be taken, some maintenance stuff for that. And they may need have an opportunity for, you know, I don't know, store the bases out there or, or different things like that. But that's what that little rectangle uh, storage maintenance building would be for. Um, we have a, a grandstands proposed directly behind the field house, behind home plate. You saw some images of that a little bit earlier. We'll get to those two in a, in a minute here. And I think that's pretty much what we wanted to cover. Uh, oh, before we go away from this too, let's again talk about the lighting. Um, again, the existing lighting at the football is 80 foot tall and it's older generation lighting. The newer uh, lighting that we're proposing is LED lighting. It'd be on a 60 foot mass. I think there's some of them that are even 50 foot, but you're trying to keep things as low as possible. Part of the reason it needs to be so high is again, for the safety of the players, because they gotta be able to see the ball. If you have the the mass is too low, it goes out of the light, and then uh, you know, we lose it and be potentially dangerous. One of the things that's really interesting about the LED lighting is it really is quite a bit more directional than most people um, maybe think about. Um, maybe a, a good example of that is if you've seen like the Speedway gas stations around, they're very well lit. If you go down there, underneath them with your, your uh, photometer and read the readings out, the foot candles are very large. But, when you look at it, it's like almost dark by the time you get to the, the edge of the parking lots because it really is that, um, I don't know, contained, the ability is able to be there. And there are different shields and stuff that we've looked at for different projects and, and uh, such as like an egg crate type uh, insert that really focuses um, the light to where it's supposed to be uh, to help keep it from bleeding where it shouldn't be or it could be a nuisance. Let's go to the next slide. We have to, okay, that was the, the photometrics. I don't know if we, uh, the numbers are there. Uh, we do meet code uh, currently for the foot candles at the property line. And again, there is additional buffering uh, along Snyder Road from the natural landscape and the raised buffer that's currently there that we are not touching. One question related to lighting. When they, if this was approved and if they were installed, the, the lighting company would come out and tune the lights so that it's meeting the requirements of the lighting for the field, but also ensuring that the foot candles are 
not exceeding what was proposed in this plan. Is that fair to say that there would um, be kind of a tuning of the lights? I, I, it would be fair for my, <laughs> I'm not 100% on their construction methods, but I can tell you they would be out there directing it to make sure that the lighting is where it is. Um, whether they walk the perimeter and, and check the foot candles, I really can't say that they do or they don't do that. I, I don't know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, again, this is uh, some renderings of uh, proposed uh, grandstands and press box behind home plate. Um, again, we are uh, hoping to uh, have some uh, identification on it and some graphics where you see the graphics. That is directly behind the existing field house. It has no visibility to any residential areas around it. I doubt if anybody can even see it from I-71 because the field house behind it I'm not going to swear to that, but I can't see it from anywhere, but it's extremely enclosed area for those graphics. Um, if the board were inclined to support a variance to approve, like this signage in particular, just so I have it, if we're, if we're going to uh, amend a, a potential condition, what is the square footage of the of, of this sign, Robert Gardner Stadium, then do you have this exact square footage if you box the Eagle base time type? Excuse me, just saying, Chris, do you have that? I'll do it. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll get that here. Um, currently, any other questions on the graphics we see up there or uh, images? Okay, we'll move on. Um, these are some uh, elevational drawings of what the, uh, the wall might be out there. We have a big purple mall, wall. And uh, the top image is if you were standing at home plate looking north, this is what the wall would look like out there in the outfield. It is on an angle, it, here it looks real flat, but it's on an angle angling away from you. And it's at 37 feet tall. Uh, behind it, you see some netting. The netting again is a, a safety concern. Um, we're trying to keep the uh, balls from running off, off the property and going into 71. We have kind of a double effect here in that we're proposing netting to run from the end of the, uh, the dugouts all the way around the home plate and down past the dugouts on the other side so that we can try and contain it when it's leaving the back. But there's also going to be chance, uh, you know, opportunities where it's still going to go over it. And so that's why we're proposing the netting farther out to keep them from going out on 71. Um, obviously, it'd be a much less expensive option to not have the netting out there, but we feel it's an important thing for the safety uh, of the community to try and do all we can to uh, keep the baseball on property. Um, again, on that top image, if you look at the center, you see a, a, a gray rectangle, and that's the size of the proposed um, scoreboard. My eyes aren't good enough. I can't read the dimensions here. I think it's like, 26 by 19. 26 is, by 19. This is the face of it. Okay. And the height would not be higher than the, the wall that's out there. And from a design standpoint, we're just trying to level it out and, and give some some interest to it too. The wall itself drops down from 37 to 20 feet, and then it drops down again to eight feet for the rest of the uh, center field wall out there. And then if you look all the way to the right, you can see uh, how we're showing the, uh, the berm that currently exists out there and existing uh, evergreen trees that are out there. And right to the left of the trees, you'll see kind of a vertical line we're proposing, again, some netting to be out in the right field outfield to help contain any, uh, you know, any great shots out there from somebody hitting the ball to keep it, again, from leaving the property. Down below it, on the bottom image, that is an image um, potentially of what it, the wall would look like from I-71 without the fact that there's a lot of vegetation out there and it would minimize the impact of that uh, to some extent. Uh, how much I don't know, because I don't know how much uh, vegetation there is on the I-71 side or what, what height it is. We know there's some there, but we don't know what the height of it is. Um, we would like to have an opportunity to put some type of identification on that wall for the stadium and for the school, with the, either the, uh, the mascot or uh, the simple uh, CHCA as much better than, but it has the football stadium has it that you can see from I-71. We, we'd like to have some identification for the, the baseball as well. 
again, it shows it dropping down to eight feet in the outfield. And, uh, and the Snyder Road, again, showing how the, the buffering would separate uh, the school facility from the public. Before you move on, what's the color of the netting? Black. Yeah, so it hopefully disappear as much as possible into the landscape. And the outside color of the wall, is it going to be this in this purplish tone? It is purplish there, and we <laughs> would like to have the school colors. So yes, I think they actually have a, a type of name for it, but generally speaking, purple, yes. Is it your opinion that the bright color or the purplish color will not have a adverse effect on drivers on I-71 to, as you're driving you know, 70 miles an hour, you see this pink color out of nowhere, people might tend to turn their head and look at it? I, well, that's a good point. And you know, one of the things that's interesting is it's a little more deep than the, like, a, it's not like a hot pink or anything like that. The other thing is when you would be seeing this would be when you're coming southbound, but there's an overpass right there. So again, it would be just, perhaps the last second that you would even glimpse it, it's gonna be completely off your vision cone to the left coming southbound. Going northbound, you've got all that landscape uh, along the way and I really doubt, and again, we're showing it flat here because, but it actually turns. So I, I don't know how much that, that would really impact a, a driver out there. Board, would it be helpful if I pulled up the Google Street View? Is that something you'd yes. want to see? I was looking at the bottom out of the, I don't have the little man that the drop down. Oh, okay. It's maps.google. Maps.google. Dot com. The address is 11525 Snyder. Here. Oh, and you're, there we go. Other side, there we go. So this is the Snyder Road uh, overpass being worked on right now. And then there's the. Okay. Looks like there's some evergreen trees out there. Do so you want to go up on Snyder? Yeah. It lets me. You have to get out. You have to get out of the street view first. There you go. Can we see that the same thing you asked us from the Snyder Road? That, that's, that's what I asked. Thanks. Oh, yes. but, oh, Is it, uh, it's this way. Right? Yeah, yeah, oh. You're right. You were right. Yeah. Oh, it went back down. Um, oh, here, let's, okay, go let's back to the map. The new little guy on the outside. Right. There we go. Uh, so the site would be on the right. So it is right there. Right. But these trees are going to be gone where your driveway is. Yeah. Yeah. Where is the driveway? It's hey, behind. Hang on. Just right there. Where is that truck? If you don't mind, I'll go up and point. Sure. The guardrail here? Yes. It's right beyond the guardrail. It's right there. Okay. So there'll be an opening there. Correct. I can pull up the landscape plan here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you have a can you zoom in on that? Okay. You can see where left of Snyder Road, there's a line with some little X's on it. That represents the guardrail. So right at the end of the guardrail 
is where the turn in would be for this um, you know, emergency access and bus parking. I'm sorry. Yeah, this would be I-71. Yeah, yeah, this is the overpass. When you're coming down, this represents the guardrail. So right where it ends, where we oh, okay. enter the site. Okay, sure. <clears throat> and then as you go um, south, there's there's some supplemental, and then there's some spaces even where the um, landscaping is added, whether where there's gaps. Right. Thank you. Sure. That did help. Um, can we go back to the? Uh... Yeah. From there, oh, these are some images of uh, the intent for inside the ball stadium, where there'll be a padded wall for player safety, and looking for some opportunity to do some graphics, perhaps like you know. Uh, district champions, uh, you know, state champions, whatever it might be, uh, on the inside of the wall, and then uh, there's an image of what the, the school board might look like um, that we're proposing. Is the uh, scoreboard other than the other than the scoring the, the score part where the uh, logo is? Is that going to be digital? It, it's not the intention. I don't believe. Oh, we're not looking for. Digital scoreboard, are there or are we? Well, I mean, they're all digital. No, but I mean, like a TV screen kind of thing. Right. So, well, can the image change? Is the idea is, is it so going to be a, is it going to be an EMC, an electronic message center board? Yes. yes. Um, I'm going to be showing the player and comes up next. So the answer is yes. Okay. If you've been the Sycamore. Uh, their former football stadium, they had one of those boards. And very, you can see it from the cross county. It's very similar to that. And then uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and field them. No pun intended. Do we have anybody from the administration here? We do. I'd ask him My name is Brian Fetzer. I am 121 East Freedom Way, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, 45202. Uh, I am the Executive Director of Athletic Strategic Development and Advancement for school. Um, one of the big things I was when I was hired two years ago now was to take a hard look at our athletic facilities and take a, take a look at our athletic department in general to make sure to find out what we can do to improve on a vast array of, of situations. Um, one of the things that uh, the baseball field um, is really going to do is, is working on safety. Um, one, uh, Fred alluded to the foul balls on, on Schneider Road. Um, as, as in charge of being in charge of budget, I know how many baseballs we lose on, on, a, on a yearly basis that go over there. Um, and, and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a, from a, a layout standpoint where that is. You know, moving it to a turf field, also a big part of, of safety um, with, if you've ever been out to our baseball field, there's a mound that goes up and throughout the outfield. It's actually a hill, um, not real not real uh, advantageous to the injuries and so forth. Um, the other big, the big part, and I really want to kind of just really emphasize the, the access road. Um, when I talked to our facilities manager, one of the first things I looked at was, you know, I think, well, you know, what happens if there's a fire? What happens if there is, you know, an emergency on the back half of the football field? What, what happens if something happens out there how, how do we get anything to it? And he just looked at it and he goes, can't really. And that's tough. That, that, that's uh, it's, it's definitely a concern for me and for our, our school. Uh, when they planned out the facility, I don't think there was a whole lot of forward thinking. Um, to be able to bring an ambulance or bring fire vehicles and so forth back on that road is important. It's not gonna be for students whatsoever. Um, 
or coaches to, to park back there. That's not, not even uh, in, in, the, uh, in the figuring or even in the, in the thought process. Um, when you start looking at, uh, you know, lights and the light fixtures and so forth, um, you know, the proposal is to go down from the standpoint of where the football lights were, you know, getting that so it's less. Uh, and, and to be honest, you know, we eventually want to take the football lights and drop them down to make the, make them more um, pinpoint, more accurate, and not as hard to deal with. Um, and right now, I think they're about 80 feet tall. And again, that's a generation way back. Um, having used and, and, and dealing with individuals that do these lights, I mean, they're very specific. And we actually have, uh, just to kind of give some, some more clarity and kind of show uh, some pictures of what the new lights look like behind them and to the side and so forth. Um, I had the company send us some, some pictures of what it might look like from a football stadium standpoint. And you can even show them to, to yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's important, like I said, and I mean, I, got, I, I guess the school wouldn't mind me putting on the record that, you know, I eventually want to get the football lights to be dropped and to be improved to this point right here. So it helps out with, with, with any kind of issues with any neighbors. Or, well, it lights you know, up the Silver Spring House, which we appreciate the, the stadium lights too, but these lights are going into a residence at a different ball. No, oh, they're going the opposite. I mean, they're going. I see the plot. They're, they're pointing right at my street. Lights pointing right at Hamiltonian. Lights pointing right at Hamiltonian. So don't tell me they're not going for my neighborhood because I can see my. Well, this, if you guys can see, I can use, see the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. And these are. No, I mean, the way the LED lights, I mean, they shine straight down as opposed to the way, if you look at the configuration of how lights are in football, they're facing outward. The sight plane is going this way. The LED lights, sight plane goes, goes down, goes straight down. And with a lesser height, it also helps, helps out with, with that situation as well. Um, the, 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 the coloring on the outside of the wall, I'd be the first one to admit, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's whatever it can kind of blend in. When we started thinking about purple, we were obviously honestly thinking about, you know, having one color of paint. And if we had, you know, hey, if this, uh, you know, this side needs touched up, all right, we already have the touch up from the other side. But if, if, it's, if it needs to be green or what's the, Jeff, what was the, the color green we kind of mentioned? I, in the report, I, or it was uh, the, you know, if you the go dark the green, GABP, the basically the same green of the red outfield wall. Yeah, that that's not uh, not an issue for us whatsoever. Um, the sound, I mean, we definitely want to improve the sound, make it so it's it's a lot uh, crisper, a lot you know you can you can vary it a lot. Kids don't want it really loud, um, and and I can tell you right now, our fans sitting in stands don't want something blaring coming right from behind their head. Um, the, uh, the square footage, Chris looked up for the, the, the one signage on the, on the back of the stadium. Yeah. That's four behind the grandstand or, or 71? No, behind the grandstand. 150 total? Okay. And in, in, in 71, if, if that's a situation where the, the approved size is 32 square feet i mean i mean we're we're completely fine with that um you know the 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 thought process with the one on the football field that's current i mean i, I would like to improve that from a standpoint and make the, the one on the baseball field look a lot cleaner and a lot crisper as opposed to um something that's just there if that makes sense um, is there any questions uh, for me? I have a few. I have a feeling there's still. You, uh, I don't necessarily know the procedures, but I have a feeling. Well, they're going to get their shot. Okay. Your, I have a feeling our questions are similar. Because my question is about um, events and use. Because mm -hmm. um, when you put lights in, then you can go into the evening. 
We, we could. I mean, the one thing that with baseball in the spring in Cincinnati, uh, rain is pretty prevalent, which is one of the reasons why making it turf, the number of cancellations we had last year or or, or moving at times, it, it, it seemed like it was, it was a daily occurrence. Um, doing that and knowing that there's going to be rain. We won't have to necessarily cancel the game because of the turf, but there could be a situation where because of the rain delay, you might have to delay it for an hour or so. Well, what happens is you get night, night rolled and in you're in your eliminated. Um, the high schools with the traveling, since they are midweek games, all of our conference games are played in the middle of the week. Um, very few games are played in the weekend in, in the springtime. And they don't want games at seven o'clock. Other high schools, we won't want games at seven o'clock. Um, we got to pick and choose. We're playing Moeller at Frasco and, and we got to choose and we're playing it starting at six. It'll be done at, you know, eight. It's almost eight o'clock now. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the light, it's still fine. Um, it's not intended to have all of a sudden, we're going to start playing nine o'clock games. We're going to start playing, you know, eight o'clock games. That's not the case. And when you start looking at from lighting from football in the fall at the stadium, as opposed to spring, we don't play fall ball. Um, you know, so I mean, it's not going to like you're going to all of a sudden have all these additional night activities in the fall and in the spring. It will stay very consistent. I mean, in the springtime, we still have. You know, certain times where we have the lights on in, in the spring, uh, the football stadium, lacrosse, so on and so forth. Um, there's not there's not a situation where hey, we want to play till you know 10, 11 o'clock at night. I, yeah, that's basically our, our, our parents more so than anybody in this room that folks would get on on our athletic department's case is our parents from you know having to pick up kids in other schools having to bus somebody back if we're playing, you know, Oak Hills and the game gets done at, you know, 9 30, 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night, there's going to be a lot of apprehension from, um, from the other schools as well. So you don't anticipate that. like any tournament events late in the evening. Is there any outside where they rent the stadium to not, not on a, not on a regular basis, not a, just if it'd be, it'd be a, an off, you know, an off situation. If we if we got to host the OHSAA kind of situations, and we'd be fine with putting restrictions on it as well. But I can understand that because that's still high school baseball. How many how many baseball home games are there in the season, approximately? If you give me a second, I can I can give you an exact exact number. How many games would you play? Yeah, yeah. play with softball too. Well, softball would be a different location. Different, different location. Okay. It's a different location. Right. Yeah, way but way different. Yeah, like baseball's ball. ninety feet bases. I think softball's sixty-five. Yeah, it's much smaller. So it's much smaller, they, and they have grass infield, so they can't play baseball and softball in the same field. No, um, no, no problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say you're probably looking at. Sorry, one, two, three. Five. You're probably looking at twelve to fifteen home games. Okay. Um, you yeah, know, that's per not year. My question. It's yeah. My fear. My of course. Is we say, oh, this looks great. Let's do it, and next you know, I'm getting <clears throat> issues with uh, tournament or outside of the school tournament right. type games, right. or you know, late in like on the weekend. Or even summer ball, right. um, cracking at the bat at eleven o'clock at night. Not yeah, no. You know, I've been to a recreational facility, but as soon as people play softball, we can get until midnight. Crazy. <coughs> but that that's kind of my sure. my concern. At, that's and and it is concern. very valid. It, it, it's it, it's extremely valid. Um, I mean, our in the summertime, we do have our summer teams that play during the day, mm -hmm. um, but again. Not into the evening, okay. that time frame. I like you said, and, and, that, and it would not turn into another type of event. 
Yeah, this is this is a baseball only okay. performance facility. Um, we will be able to utilize, which will will be a positive on on the flip side. We'll be able to utilize it for junior high uh, football practice because it's turf, which will reduce the number of evenings that we could potentially have um, the stadium lights on in the fall as well, because we're going to, you know, be able to have our junior high practice in there as well. Practice is super cool. Yeah, ab absolutely. But I mean, it, it becomes, it becomes multi-use right after practice school. Our, our parents, one of the bigger concerns or one of the, the, the things that our parents at our school, you know, value is their kids getting home at a decent hour and not being late. Um, so, Creating multiple purpose practice facilities helps out tremendously in that standpoint. So they can they can get home and they're not coming to pick their kid up at 7 30, 8 o'clock at night. Thank you. Absolutely. Would uh, the school be acceptable to a condition such that uh, that the field would only be used for school purposes and not be rented out to outside agencies or organizations? For the baseball field? Yeah. I mean, I definitely want to check. I mean, we've got a lot of our, our student or uh, our, uh, our families have summer teams and stuff like that to practice. I mean, I would definitely say we could put in there, you know, a time allotment and so forth. Just one bit of context for the board, the case 3697, the football, I do not believe there was any restrictions on use for that. Um, that was a, uh, stadium project that allowed for more seating. The, the setbacks are closer to East Kemper in 71, um, and there's taller lights. But in that case, there were no restrictions. Um, from a staff perspective, perspective, it would be very difficult for staff to enforce such a, a restriction. We have no way to know. Plus, these things are happening after hours where we're not working. So. Anytime we have any kind of non- uh school functions there. We have to have site managers on site. Uh, that was one of the things that we put in uh, at the Jeff. Jeff had asked me <coughs> security and, and um, refuse removal. I, I actually uh, had to kind of look up what refuse was. No, that, that, that's smart. But, um, but there, there's always a site manager on, on site for any of those kind of <coughs> situations. Any other questions? Okay. Then I'm going to open up to the public. Is there anybody from the public that'd like to speak? I see you mean. I don't like that. Hi there. I'm Lisa Jester. I live at 8363 Hamiltonian, which is the Hut Bauer Farms, which faces the school. Uh, we love CHCA. Our kids went to school there. In fact, we moved close to the area because we wanted to be part of that community. The challenge we find is that the school continues to grow in a very, very dense area. And so there are a number of issues being caused by that, namely parking. And that's a whole different issue. I know you said you can't, you can't rule on that, but this is a 500 seat stadium. Okay, so we start from a very small, it's a baseball field that currently is faced away from our neighborhood. Okay, the street comes straight down and unfortunately all the new plans don't show where our houses are compared to those. But at any rate, before the back of the stadium and um, went away from the neighborhood. So sound went away from us, although we could still, we could still hear things, um, but it was not a big, uh, stadium. It was not a big seat. It's kind of a casual baseball field. And it was very enjoyable. This is changing from that kind of a field, flipping it completely. So it's facing our neighborhood. Stadium faces our neighborhood. Lights now, before there were no lights, there were no night games. And obviously there's going to be a sound system. So we hear a lot of comparison here with the football field and, and the baseball field. There is no comparison. The football field is much larger. It does not, it does not front residential property. 
It's it, on it, 71. It, it does front residential property on East Kemper. East Kemper residential three houses. houses. It does not front on it. The, the, the house is at the corner of CNC administration building. Right. And then three houses that are past there. As far as the access for emergency access, emergency access gets there right away, right from Kemper. They pull right off to the back of the football field and they can go across there. So it's kind of some apples and oranges going on. And those lights are huge. They're gigantic. And, you know, we can hear, we can sit in our backyards and hear the football game. And there's a finite kind of time that it's over. So now we're doubling that sound. We're taking from what was a seasonal baseball time, no lights, minimal sound. We're flipping the field and we're going to give it what their, their own definition is a multi-seasonal field. Again, if we look at the football field, it is constantly not just used by the school, but it's rented out to all kinds of different um, soccer, um, all kinds of different sporting organizations. And the field is constantly in use for the football. Now we're kind of doing the same thing and we're adding that much more traffic, lights, sound, et cetera, to, to, to our neighborhood. And I think, you know, one thing that we are looking for is that at minimal, um, the sound system needs to be out towards the field facing the stands, not on the stands facing out towards our homes. I mean, we don't want to hear every single three hours worth of every ball, I love baseball, but I don't want to hear every single ball and strike call on every single play for three hours every weeknight and going on into late hours of school when, when kids are getting up. It's weeknights games, which we just kind of confirmed, and kids need to go to bed. You know, if we're going to go past nine o'clock very much, that's really, that's really impinging on our neighborhood. We, we like to be, um, you know, we like to support the school, but unfortunately, when Mitt Moeller was here earlier, we heard that they worked ahead of time with the community. We got no advance notification. In fact, I mean, I used to distribute communication for the school, just living in the neighborhood, just to have good um, relations. We got no information and how we found out about it, because we live in Sims Township, which is sorry, right across the street, obviously, from Sycamore. How we learned about this was your little for sale sign that sat kind of down in the gully. And thank heavens you guys put that up or we would know nothing about this. That's why there are not many of us here tonight because nobody drives down that end now that Snyder Road is closed. And it's blocked by all the big construction traffic that's repairing the bridge. You can't Please wait, that. wait your turn. <laughs> okay, so it, 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 right, the, con the construction trucks are sitting in front of where your sign is. And I called once and tried to, but at, at any rate, a major change. It doesn't sound like a lot to you folks. Yes, it's a baseball field, but besides that, it's vastly different from what is there now. Lighting, sound is a big issue. Night games where there was none before. Um, and uh, we want to know what we're going to see from our, our homes. The, the drawings that they showed you, we know what it's going to look like from 71. I, I didn't see any pictures on what it's going to look like from Snyder. And that, and then for the last kind of piece is the turnoff for the access where it's going to be uh, paved. That means our homeowners are going to look across the street now to a paved parking lot, and that is a break and where the trees and all and the the greenery have been. So, I, I think there are a lot of things here that that really really could be revised in kind of the area of what safety, um, kind of neighborhood nuisance noise lighting and just working together for a little bit better plan. That's all I have. And I think. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, next. I apologize for speaking over her. That's my wife and we complete each other's sentences. So. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Dester, 8363 Hamiltonian Drive. Um, we are in Sims Township. We're not in Sycamore Township, but that corner right there, Kemper and Snyder is basically where Sycamore and Sims adjoin. And I think you share a police department um, too. Um, so I have a few um, issues. So we talked about putting a compressor limiter in there. Um, I worked in video and audio for 40 years. A compressor limiter, what it does is it takes the quiet parts and it makes them louder. And it takes the loud parts and it makes them quieter. So from that, you get volume. Volume is measured in units. 
that little volume um, thing on the on the soundboard there, that shows you what volume is. Volume is not loudness. What it does is it keeps things from getting distorted. But then when I turn up the speakers, then I have loudness, which is measured in decibels. And we don't know what the decibels are going out to the neighborhood. So just because you put a compressor limiter in there doesn't mean it decreases the, uh, the loudness. It just makes it cleaner. So I can hear it cleaner at my house. If, if I may, I had no idea what one was, but I took it. Right. Was, so sure. I put in Presley's volume. People so. who work in video and audio have no idea what one is either. <laughs> so you're not the only one. So one thing, I, maybe you can clue this up for me, the speakers, where are they aimed? Is that on the drawing? Is it aimed towards Snyder? Or is it aimed back towards the, the grandstands where the people watching the game are sitting? Because that would help a lot if it was aimed towards the grandstand and not towards the residents. Is that on the drawing anywhere? Can anyone answer that question? Um, okay. Okay. Well, we'd appreciate it as residents. It was aimed towards the, the people in the stands. It's brought up a really good point, so I'm going to ask a man. So the speakers. We need are, him to come up. Could you please come up? <clears throat> so the. Announcing. Give us your name again so that uh, we sure. make the record right. Uh, Fred Bowling with MSP Design. Okay. Yes. So the uh, announcing and the speakers, those are for the fans, correct? The yeah. On the grandstand. Yeah. So, so the speakers could just be limited to just that area? Uh, yeah. It, again, um, I apologize when we come to preliminary things we don't have all the engineering done on these projects and there would be an audio engineer that would be part of our consultant design team and so i really can't speak to how many there's going to be but you know that would be worked out it as the things went on we just want to make sure that people knew there was a sound system i uh, would like to work with everybody to make it you know acceptable um, but i i sorry i can't speak to exactly where they'll be i personally sitting here tonight and listen to this, I don't think it'd be a problem being in the outfield. I'm not an audio engineer. And he might say, no, you really can't do that. So I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Well, the reason I ask is because where, where I live is quite, it's quite a distance from Lowell. It's not, it's less than a mile. It's probably in that neighborhood. And on their Saturday afternoon football games on their athletic field, back, I could hear loud and clear, mm -hmm. um, which kind of brings up the point. Why should I be able to hear that? When the people are running that football field, that's all you need to address. So I guess if if I may, said, with, with a football field, you get two question. sides. You get two sides. You get a visitor yeah, side and a home side. They all need to hear it. But with a baseball, you've only got right, one to one right direction. There, that, it would seem like that the if we're talking about sound, which we are, mm -hmm. we could minimize the sound to just that immediate area where the fan base is. Am I wrong? It does an outfielder need to hear if it's a you can. Put that in. I'm following your, your logic, but I don't know how you can limit sound to staying. No, in it's a just certain we're going to limit. What, what we can do is we can limit the sound system to the uh, stadium area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we'll just we'll, to the grandstand area. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You I have like, no I problem like with that, do you? I like that. No. I okay. Mean, we currently have a sound system out there. Oh, we can't. Yeah, you gotta go up there, Dave. Because there's a record for this meeting, right? I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. You see what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm used to just trying to help, you know, facilitate problems. And make Give sure us your name, Brian <laughs> Fetzer. Okay. Brian Fetzer from CHCA. Uh, we currently have a sound system at the baseball field right now. It would be going in this direction. Uh, yeah. Right, away from the house. Away from the house. I mean, I, I mean, I honestly don't. I mean, I'm not a sound engineer, but I don't see why you couldn't have it to be something. What we'll like do that. is we'll limit it to the grandstand area. Okay. Just, just one point of clarification: there's the grandstand area with seating, and then there's uh, a. a on the left or the uh, third baseline, there's additional seating 
uh, right here, would it be limited to these two seating structures? Is that correct? Right? Okay. Let's and, and talk to the sound individuals to figure out what the easiest way or the most conducive way yeah. to get them oriented, oriented, oriented in the right the direction of fan. Because yeah, there's there's no okay. reason honestly to have anything out in the outfield. Just <laughs> west towards the highway and not east towards Sutter. Okay. All right. Thank you. I want to ask a question of who? <laughs> 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 Mr. Mullen, you made the statement that this is uh, preliminary. Yeah, it, when we come and present this, we're, we're asking for a, uh, uh, a conditional use approval. So all the details are not worked out at this point. This is the direction we want to go. Um, what kind of... Uh, uh, seats for example are, are going to be in there we're, we're thinking we'd like to have like aluminum seating with the like the uh the stadium uh with the backs on well we're going to work through all those kind of details so there's lots of details that i mean we've got a good idea what we want to do but we haven't worked through all the details because you might have for whatever reason we weren't aware of said absolutely not there's no way in heck we're going to approve this thing tonight well, we wouldn't have you. We would have spent thousands and thousands of dollars to have all these consultants work out every detail and then get a, a no and then it, all for nothing. So we come to you with our best picture of what we want to accomplish. And then when we get approvals, we move forward with completing the design development and the construction documents for bidding and building. I understand what you're saying. And maybe I'm off base here, but we're trying to approve. I think a completed project. Yes, no. There are things that you could, if we approved it, there are things you could do that later on we might say, well, wait a minute, that we didn't. Actually, you, you hit a good point because when we get approval to move forward from the zoning standpoint, we still have to get a building permit. And that's when it comes back to zoning and they review it. And if we didn't follow through on what we said, you can reject it. Well, the question is then, should you be at a zoning meeting, not us? No, no, no. Th this is the correct forum. In the viewpoint of staff, sufficient detail was provided, knowing that, for example, with the sound which has come up, if there needs to be more detail added, it would. Um, uh, with, with, with any project, for example, a, a new development, uh, commercial or residential, for example, when it becomes before the trustees, final grading is not finished yet. You know things like that. Some of the some of the micro details, but but the macro details are here, and they're sufficiently present. Okay. So maybe I used the wrong, uh, uh, maybe you improper did. word, saying preliminary, because maybe you did. So I, I apologize I, I for asked that. The question, and I saw a lot of heads going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah. Maybe it's I just, just I just miscommunication. I, I thought, just want to make sure you knew that there was more detail coming mm -hmm. than what's presented here to us or to them what well, for, for the building permit uh, you know okay. the, the, we don't have all the building details there's elements for like a type of seat type or uh, different building elements that zoning doesn't look at i, I don't care about the seats and the door or anything like that but i think that's what he was that's yeah, that's, that's where what he, he was going. describing yes right Not, so. but you know I, this, this talk about the sound and gee i don't know maybe it'll go this or maybe it'll go that way um, i guess that's right. We'll just say it has to be this way. Well, that's you have conditions, conditions that you put on this, and say one of the conditions okay. is that it has to be this way. And if we bring it back and it's not that way, it gets rejected. I understand. Okay, I so uh, wanted to find out where we were. Sure. So you, you still have uh, control over the final product in that regard. Okay. That's a reminder: there is a condition that if there is a substantive, substantial change that's 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 more than a minor alteration, we would bring it not hesitate to bring it back before the board for review. Okay, Mr. Jester, are you finished? No. Okay, no. let's finish then. I could ask you to just sit in the front row because most of the things I have here are questions and not statements. And I'm sure you can probably answer them. Also, I just wanted to say too, our kids went to CHCA. We love CHCA and I have friends who work at McGill Smith Punch and Craig Rambo, Jose Castron. So I'm not against the project per se, but there are just certain elements that I don't really find conducive to living in my neighborhood. Um, okay, so we talked about the speakers and which way they're oriented. Okay, and, and, and lighting. I mean, we're going from no lighting to lighting towers that are 60 
feet. And as you can see from that drawing there, they are pointing straight at our neighborhood. So we're going from zero night lights to actual lights. And if they're orienting them you know, the right way, there won't be any spillage, but I have no actual real guarantee from what everyone said that they're going to be oriented the right way. That's, that's their belief. It's my hope. But I like what I just said. Right, I know. I don't have a promise to that. Yeah, that was a good point there. Um, also, um, you know, tournament and AAU type games are also another consideration because our kids played soccer. And on nights when the CHCA team wasn't playing soccer, Cincinnati United was up there playing soccer till nine o'clock at night um, with the lights on at the football soccer stadium. So I don't really want that happening with this baseball stadium too. And the allure of money, you know, with OHSAA games, getting you know, some of the gate, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to turn down getting money, especially when you don't get state funding in your schools like a private school does. So we wouldn't really want that too. So if there's some way you can write some kind of guarantee that there won't be night games played by outside agencies, that would, you know, help the residents a lot. And I know we're not your residents, but you, we're right on your border. I think we already mentioned that. Didn't yeah. Okay. So um, also not sure what it's going to do to property values. I don't want my property values to go down, but there's a lot of projects that are going on between the two townships. Um, Snyder Road, there's an apartment complex going down with 80 uh, parking spaces. And it's not yours. And then Silver Spring House, 125. And then down at the middle school, a thousand seat stadium. All, all we're talking about here right. is but this. What I'm saying is with all these I, 500 more seats, that corner that we share, Kemper and Snyder, is going to be converged with all this traffic in the next two years. And who drives there? School buses and kids. So, and I know you can't base things on traffic too, but it's just like another consideration for the residents because kids get T-boned there all the time. You can you ask the police department. You can see it if you look at the traffic report. I'm not making this up. Um, baseballs do come over there. I don't care. I pick them up, I throw them back over there. I'd rather have baseballs coming over the day than uh, light and noise coming into my neighborhood at night. Tennis balls come over there too. Are we gonna put nets up over for the tennis balls? I don't think so. It's not that many baseballs. Like I walked, now I'm retired, I walk there all the time. And as a good neighbor, I pick them up and throw them so I'm hoping to recoup the cost of your baseballs. And uh, I also don't care about the view from 71. That's irrelevant to me. I'd rather have it oriented towards 71 because when you're driving there, you shouldn't be looking that long anyway. You should be driving. But, you know, the green monster in my neighborhood, the light and the noise, that's something I have to look at all the time, whether than the 10 seconds of driving past CHC on 71. And another thing, uh, CHC has practice facilities down on Snyder Road um, that they could easily just move this whole project to and not have to put it facing my neighborhood. So, uh, you know, there's plenty of space out there. They could just move the whole project a uh, couple miles away. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public? Okay, we're going to close it to the public and the board's going to deliberate on this project. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, well, you heard Michael's words. <laughs> okay, let's, 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 so we've got three or four votes here, right? To one of the conditional use and one of the variants, if the conditional use passes. Okay, so the first first thing we're going to do is talk about the conditional use that's called for in this. All right. Any discussion on that? Um, I'm looking at this, and I think that uh, Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy has been you know, been a jewel for this, for Sycamore Township. And sports are a huge part of any high school or any grade school anymore. And I think that this design is really nice. Um, you know, the, the lighting is, so much better than the old ones the the you know we're, we're looking at lights looking down that's why they go up high 
we're, we're looking at downward lights, not shining straight across. If you lower the lights, you have to do that. If you, if you go with short light poles, you got to shine the light across. Whereas this is, they're going to be aimed down. We're going to put in a uh, stipulation that the sound only covers the, uh, the grandstands. Does that include, does that, you understand that if I say grandstands that we're. Yeah, and, and by the count, that would be, as we currently stand, condition 15. So there's currently oh. 14 conditions that that would oh, be 15. Okay, at the end. you didn't number them. Okay, I should have. Unpopular. Okay, that's not a problem. So I'm just thinking that we include all these conditions and anybody got a proposal or a motion? One, uh, a few things to flush out, and I think this would be as you guys consider the conditions that uh, there were a few conditions that were a little bit um, that hadn't gelled yet. Number one was the signage. Uh, the initial report uh, states that no signage shall be cited anywhere outside the stadium except what is permitted by the Sigma Township Burlington, et cetera, et cetera. Just given with the staff support of us, the signage behind home plate, I would recommend changing that um, to no signage shall be cited anywhere outside the stadium except what is permitted by approved variance. There would be a new variance. Um, this would be the fourth variance in that package of a variance to allow X number of square footage on the outside of the grandstand behind home plate. I think the, the square footage of that was 150 square feet and staff is comfortable with that. Okay. If the board so chose, you know, you could approve another variance to allow square footage for the outside of the stadium facing 71. But uh, like I said, with the current um, football, uh, square footage on their they have a sign I, I imagine when they come back for conditional use to amend their 97 approval they'll want to update that um, the township found the, the 71 signage on the baseball to be accessible so but if, if the board would like to go for a variance for that certainly up to you guys yeah I, I think there needs to be some additional conditions other than what staff has put together uh, for instance your condition two dealing with the uh, scoreboard. <clears throat> I agree that the back of the scoreboard shall not have any signs on it, uh, the bat being the back of it, um, and you have and shall have a maintained backing of a solid color. I think that should be changed to um, shall be a single neutral color of either green, brown, tan, black, or gray. I think that there should be a condition that says there shall be no signage on the exterior wall facades at all. And that's anywhere along that outside wall. That's uh, for the, the, that's for the outfield or the in, or, or the on the outside of the stadium or the inside. The exterior, exterior of right. the entire wall facades. I see. No signage anywhere on the exterior of that wall. Um, the exterior wall facade and netting shall be of a single neutral color of either green, brown, tan, or black or gray. And lastly, no part of the scoreboard shall be visible from any single family residential property, any second floor of any single family residence, or from any point that is six feet higher than the pavement of either Snyder Road or I-71. And the six feet height is because when you get into a truck cab, you are more than you're about six feet higher than the pavement. And that is all for safety purposes for drivers on those two roadways, as well as the view shed of those residential properties. And while you may not be able to see it at ground level, if you're sitting in your bedroom and you have that window open, you don't want to be seeing that school board. So the score uh, 16 would be the netting neutral color. The uh, uh, the back of the uh, video board uh, that was amending to 17 if the board so chose set the 17th condition would be limiting the uh, view shed of the scoreboard to six foot max off the pavement. What is your issue with the, with the signs? I just don't think there should be any signs on the exterior of the wall. They already they already have one. Well, they, there's one out there already. There's oh. one on the football. And. Uh, they've already said that you probably won't be able to see the color of the of the exterior wall and if you can't see the color then you shouldn't be able to see any sign and i think that you know they are asking for a 
very large facility. Uh, I think it's appropriate facility, but I don't think that they should be, they should have any advertising on the outside of that wall. It, uh, all signage in and of itself can create a, a hazard for the drivers on 71 and on the Snyder roadside, it's facing residential and those folks shouldn't be seeing any signs. Well, I understood it's, it's the conversation to be for 71 and I, I would agree. I mean, there's no way to get into the stadium from 71, so why have a sign there? Okay. Hold on a sec. Did you have a, a, a issue? I, I, I would ask that you go go up, go up to the... <laughs> Give us your name again. Yes, sir. Make sure it's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> I am Fred Bowling uh, with MSP Design. Okay. Um, I would like to ask the board to reconsider the, the height of six feet uh, with regard to I-71 because I-71 is lower than the entire site already. So it might be six feet below the ground. I mean, still be below the ground level at uh, the school site. So I'd ask you to reconsider that. We'd also like to ask if we could please show you a street level view along Snyder Road as far as uh, what the existing landscape out there is blocking and well, what is blocking and what's not. And if you're open, we'd like to show you that image. I can have some pictures here. Yeah, I have a ton of words. Here we go. That's well, you can't go down that street. Look at that. That's what. Right. You don't see anything. Right. Oh, yeah. And we're not changing. Don't feel we see lights at night, but we don't see anything there. You don't know what the new plants can be. Okay. And the trees are coming out right here, though. Exactly. No, there's no trees coming out there. No. Where the at the end of the guardrail, it's, it's, it's down another 150 on feet. On the other end. No, no, it's right there. there. <laughs> hold it, hold it. We can't have any yeah. comments from the audience. We, we're that, we're now on there. staff deliberations. Okay. He's telling me that's, he's saying, oh, right here. So they're going to cut these trees down. If I may, the center line of the street you're looking down and the center line of the proposed emergency access are 150 feet apart. Okay. So that what you're looking at down here all remains as you see it. In fact, we're adding to it with the landscape. I get that, okay. but where the guardrail ends, you're starting your access road and you're taking out trees. There are houses over here. Okay. That's all I'm saying. It's not, there are gonna be trees coming down from the access road. That's all. The, and, and just one note, the, the trees will be cut down to the access road behind where the scoreboard is oriented. The scoreboard will be oriented to the uh, south, basically, and that, that scoreboard will be in front of those trees cut. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Just as a clarative for the, um, the wall, that does not include the, uh, for signage outside of the grandstand, that would be still permissible. Correct, that's not, that's not a wall, that's okay. the grandstand. Just, just, to be, just to be clear for I am. I minutes. use the word wall very specifically. Very good. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else? That's some. You've heard right. my concerns. Well, I. I I think that the scoreboard is not a not a big problem. Because you have such good buffering, and I, you know, uh, I think you got too many requirements on the view on that. Uh, trying to comply with them all may be a little confusing, and the scoreboard's aimed at the aimed. Uh, yeah, yeah. They may be able to, but uh, we've got good buffering. I'm not concerned with that. And I think they need a scoreboard. So that's the only other, all the other issues you've got, I'm in agreement with. You, you, so the pink, pinks, or the purple's gonna be gone. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, I, I, like, I like your thoughts. 
it, it's just that I think on the scoreboard it makes my head spin to try and comply with it. It's all okay. So if you take that out, I'm on agreement with you. Do you have all his? I'm, I'm going to. I'll make the motion. And I'll restate it. How's that? Just, just uh, one clarify for the for the color of the back of the sign. Does that also include the outside of the color of the wall too? Okay. Well, you're ready? Um, oh, you're not ready. One second. Um, related to uh, uh, condition 13, the max height of the left field netting, that was that was still left open. In I, was the, gonna, I was gonna throw it 50 feet, which is which is 13 feet higher than the tallest portion of the wall. I guess has the have you guys done the trig to trigonometry? It's how we're working, sorry. <laughs> so, so yeah, I guess it would just be the height of the um, the left field, and then the right field. If it was above thirty five, that would affect the variance. So. Yeah, we anticipate that it will not be more than fifty feet along I seventy one. We're hoping to keep it lower because again, the costs are lower. But we need to do more detailed uh, physics to kind of figure out how high would be an optimal height to keep baseballs from getting out to 71 without going excessive on the height. So we agree that we are anticipating somewhere in that vicinity uh, to begin with. Okay. And as far as what? Pardon? 50 would probably be the max. Exactly. For both and, left and, and right field? That would be fine, yeah, because we're figuring, we're figuring the right field towards Snyder would probably even be lower than 71. Okay, thank you. Lastly, anticipating um, potential signage that comes up when people donate money for things like this, you know, generally institutions will put up like some sort of donor wall and just thinking ahead so that if it came up, we have it covered now. Arbitrarily, I just threw out a 10 feet by 10 foot max memorial donor wall with a maybe with a two foot base or 12 foot tall. Um, it could be double-sided, non-digital. Is CHCA comfortable with that, or is the board comfortable with that? Is it conditional? Yeah. Ready? Wait for you. Based on the evidence and testimony provided, I make a motion to approve the conditional use permit with the following conditions. Condition number one, as stated in the staff report. Condition number two, uh, as stated with, in the staff report with the following modification. The back of the scoreboard yeah. shall not have any signs on it and shall have a and shall have a maintained backing of a single neutral color of either green, brown, tan, or black or gray. Condition three, as written in the staff report. Condition four, rewritten to read, there shall be no signage on the exterior wall facades. Condition five. Would, um, uh, would that be accepted as what uh, what is permitted by this uh, no. by, by by variance? No signs on the exterior walls right. of the stadium. But in, in in condition in that condition, we define outside the stadium is defined as any elevation not facing the playing field. Correct. I'm saying no signage whatsoever. Uh, conditions five through twelve, as written. Uh, in the staff report. Condition 13, uh, the max height of the left field netting shall be no taller than 50 feet. Uh, 14, as written uh, by the staff report. New condition 15, sound amplification shall be, uh, shall be limited to the area occupied by the grandstand structures. Uh, new condition 16, the exterior wall facades and netting shall be a single neutral color of either green, brown, tan, or black, or gray. That is it. That's it. That's it. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Take a roll. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Tenley. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. Yeah. Hi. I'm sorry, Mr. Lucas. Yes. Mr. Schultz. Yes. 
And then to follow that up, I will make a motion to approve the variances uh, with the conditions that the validity period uh, be extended uh, for a maximum of two years unless a building permit is issued. Um, the height standards uh, shall not exceed 65 feet in height. Um, all of the setbacks uh, shall be varied as stated in the staff report and the sign on the back of the grandstand shall not exceed 150 square feet. Just on the third okay. variance, the, the exact measurements that I have listed there are me measuring the grade general. In that, in, that variance, or in that variance request, it requires them to put the actual yeah. setbacks as they are now. So they, there might be a little variation, but it'll be basically be the same plan. With, within one or two feet of, of what is identified in the staff report. Yeah. Yes. Got a second? I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Luger. Yes. Mr. Tenna. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Schultz. Yes. Okay. We're finished with this uh, communication and miscellaneous business. Anything? I, I, I'd like to say something. I don't know if I'm on solid ground here or not, but uh, for my purposes, um, Jeff goes through the condi uh, considerations, conditions, et cetera, et cetera. I'm very happy with a uh, sort of a report by exception. You don't have to read the whole thing. You can name which one you know you want to take exception to, if that makes any sense to you, rather than having to read the whole damn thing. I don't know how anybody else feels, but I don't, I, or even you. Yeah, but I, but I, uh, I don't know if you have to read the whole thing. We should have read it before we got here. Um, I don't know if that's for them or, or exactly what that's about. It, I, <laughs> part of it's a practice to read it into the record. You'd be surprised the boards I've worked with or been on that a lot. I find that maybe they don't um, if you read it out. But if, if you don't want me to read it, I, I we can not do that. In a sense, I don't care. I just kind of felt like you were going on and on and on. It was trying to help you as much as I'm trying to help us. No, no, yeah. Um, I mean, this was a kind of a detailed one, but. Uh, you know, I I would do we would do whatever the board wants, but uh, okay. yeah. again, I don't have anybody else feel, but if you just went through these and said, you know, they comply, they comply, they but on this one we, we have a problem. Kind of a thing. And it's easy to say that the staff report is is uh, entered into the record by reference. So it, it was my assumption that that went in in print for somebody anyway. Yeah. But, I, I agree. I think it would help because then you emphasize the things. Yeah. yeah, we can work on that. Any any other communications? Uh, last meeting, there was a member of it was a fence case, and the, the person claimed that they did not. Yeah. Um, they did receive notice. We checked back at the letters we sent out, and then in fact, the next morning, the sign was still present in their yard that said the meeting started at six p.m. So I just want the. The, the rest of the story. Yes. Okay. The board remember that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's have a motion for adjournment. My motion to adjourn. I'll say. Roll the call. Mr. Schwartz. Yes. Mr. Luger. Yes. Mr. Tenna. Yes. Ms. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Schultz. Yes. We did good mowers, didn't we? Yes, yes we did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> All right, we're adjourned. That's yes. a little late, though.